second big principle of Darwin uh, is the principle of antithesis. And so what Darwin reasoned is that, um, that if you convey one state in one pattern of signaling behavior, humans should reliably signal, non-humans and mammals as well, uh, and primates should signal the opposite state in an opposite pattern of behavior, right? Uh, so if I communicate strength by puffing out my chest, I communicate modesty by doing the opposite pattern of behavior. This principle organizes all kinds of findings in the new literature. Let me tell you about two. Um, the, and then a, a Darwinian observation on uh, spirituality, which maybe we'll return to, uh, which is that um, you know, I've done some research on love, uh, and Paul and I have debated about whether love is an emotion or not. Darwin wrote about two or three types of love. But love, and, and this is an important tip for the young people out in the audience, which is all you have to do to get somebody to marry you is really simple, which is you do the opposite of anger, right, according to the principle of antithesis. Anger is like this, and our studies of young Berkeley undergrads when they fall in love, when they're feeling in love with people, it's nothing metaphorical or magical or literary. It's just the opposite of anger. They go like this, right? And the minute you open your hands, a universal gesture of greeting, and you tilt your head like that, the op people know you feel love. You're, you're feeling love yourself. You get these big bursts of oxytocin in your bloodstream. There's nothing magical about love. Just tilt your head, and you'll go far. Um, <laughs> now, the principle of antithesis was in my ears as I was working in Paul's lab as a postdoc. And Paul and I uh, were doing a project on the startle response. And Paul had gathered a bunch of data uh, and, um, on the nature of the startle response. It's a seven muscle movement, if I'm correct. Or... More or less. Good enough. He's a tough sell, by the way. So. <laughs> uh, it's this fast response that tells you, the magnitude of the startle response tells you how stressed out somebody is. And there's a rich literature on this. And I joke about it in my book, you know, all you have to do, if you're figuring out whether you want to settle in with somebody to be a roommate or a romantic partner, and we know empirically really stressed out people are harder to live with, my advice to you is to startle them in an unexpected fashion and see how big their startle response is. Go up to them and go, bam! Right? And if they throw and they shake their fist at you, time to pack your bags and move on. Uh, <laughs> So Paul and I were doing this project that documented some of that, um, and I was coding the startle response. And after the startle response, uh, when people get startled, um, they, uh, they get startled. Paul had characterized, you do not know how hard this work is, the seven distinct movements that fly by at about 75 milliseconds each on the face. Paul figured out how to code that. Um, maybe we'll talk about that today. Uh, sure enough, there was the startle response. It correlated with how stressed out the person was. But after the startle response, people got really embarrassed, about half the people. Because when you get startled, you lose your body composure. You think you're, you have drool on your face, or you've wet your pants, and you're on videotape. And then they got embarrassed. And embarrassment is organized according, as Darwin in part reasoned, the principle of antithesis. It is organized according to the opposite pattern of dominance, it's very submissive, small, and the like. And interestingly, on spirituality, uh, Darwin had one observation on the state of reverence in which he observed a human universal to get very small and kneel in states of reverence, which are interesting to think about evolutionarily. 